We simply cannot continue to spend as if deficits don't have consequences, as if waste doesn't matter, as if the hard-earned tax dollars of the American people can be treated like monopoly money. I looked it up, $15,140 in a set of monopoly, $1.6 trillion a deficit. That's a couple of games. Uh, let, let's hope we can actually spend it like monopoly money. Top line begins right now. Hello and welcome to ABCNews.com's Top Line. I'm Rick Klein. And I'm Jonathan Carl. Every day at noon Eastern time, we bring you the latest political news and analysis, everything you need to know about your day in politics. And it's Twitter.com slash the note if you just can't get enough. And John, kick us off. Top Line budget blues, or actually, Rick, I guess I should say red. There's a lot of talk from the White House today about the spending freeze, about cutting wasteful spending, about getting the budget under control. But the number here that matters is the one you referred to, $1.6 trillion annual deficit this year. That is obviously historically high and just a staggering one-year budget shortfall. It is, and, and, and still deficits as far as the eye can see. There, as much as President Obama has talked about fiscal discipline and reining these things in, there is no path from here to there as far as closing this deficit, and you're seeing Republicans pounce on that, of course. They did a lot of spending on their own. They didn't need a Democratic president mm -hmm. for it, but uh, it's, it, it's an easy talking point today. Tax time. Those Bush tax cuts would expire, and along with them would the pledge that and the promise that President Obama was able to issue last week about no one's taxes going up. Actually, this budget would have new taxes, and including, among other things, some things he's tried in the past, like limiting the number of deductions that, uh, that higher income people could have. Uh, clearly, there's an appetite in the Democratic Party to do something on higher end income earners. But again, we talk about the, the politics of these sort of things. You can now couple in record spending with new tax hikes and you've got Republicans pretty happy with where they stand. Yeah, and Republicans will be crunching the numbers on these tax cuts, these tax hikes, and they will be uh, calling these record high tax increases. And they'll be talking about raising taxes going into or in the midst of, of a recession or, or, or a, a recovery that is only anemic. So Republicans will be hitting this tax issue almost as hard, maybe even as we go in the home stretch, harder than they do the spending issue. Uh, next up, Haiti headaches. The word from the White House now is that those um, emergency medical evacuation military flights to Florida will now be resumed. This has been a complete disaster on many levels, Rick, but the question here is, what exactly happened? It's still unclear why these medical flights to Florida uh, were stopped in the first place. All we do know is that they only stopped after Governor Christ raised that question about who's going to pay. He made it clear he didn't want the state of Florida to be paying for all those Haitians that are in Florida hospitals. Yeah, Governor Christ is in a tight spot on this one. He tried to explain how this letter may have been misinterpreted. If you read it and they talk about the, the fact that resources in Florida aren't unlimited, clearly that seems to have had some impact on, on how these flights proceeded. They will be back on, we're told, but it, it is something of a hiccup as this goes on. And primary season. Tomorrow is the first day of primary season 2010. It is happening in Barack Obama's home state of Illinois, where there's a hot Senate race as well as a gubernatorial race going on. If you're looking for tests of the Barack Obama coattails, if you're looking for tests for incumbents, this one's got it all. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, especially looking at the, uh, the incumbents or, 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 or the presumed incumbents. I mean, you have uh, a Governor Quinn, obviously, in real trouble. And also Alexei Julius, who we thought was the, you know, the leading candidate for the Democratic nomination. You know, he's got a really tough race, too. This will be a very interesting one to watch. Indeed he does. And we're beginning with primary season uh, 2010. We're guest today from Connecticut, from Hartford, is uh, former Congressman Rob Simmons, a Republican from Connecticut, seeking the Senate nomination up there in, in Connecticut. Uh, thank you, Congressman, for being here. And I, I want to start with the, the proposal that the President Obama has put forward recently for job creation, because you put forward your job package today. And I, I noticed some similarities. The, the talk, Barack Obama talking about the need for tax credits credits, uh, tax incentives for businesses. Is this something you think uh, you would get behind, that you think that the, the Republican Party in Washington should be getting behind? Well, I think the only similarity I see is the phrase small business. Uh, you know, when you go out and, and talk to small businessmen and women, they will give you a range of issues that they're, they're concerned about. Uh, I served as the business advocate for two years here in Connecticut, visited over 400 businesses. Uh, and it's more than, than just, let's say, a tax credit for a new hire. What about the expensing for new equipment, which is included in the Bush tax cuts that are about to expire? Uh, what about uh, association health plans for health costs? What about uh, opening up uh, SBA, the Small Business Administration, and getting them and the banks to extend some more credit out there? Uh, what about streamlining the, the job training? So there, there are a whole range of... Uh, of issues that we need to talk about, and 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 while it's uh, 
perhaps a little bit encouraging that the president mentioned small business. Uh, I, I think we, we have to have a much more comprehensive plan for small business. Congressman, I'd like to talk a little bit about your race. You know, okay. if you look at the polls before Chris Dodd dropped out, I mean, you, you were looking great. You, 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 had a, you had a lead in many of the polls in a hypothetical matchup. Now he's out, Blumenthal is in, and you're down 30 to 40 points in this race in almost any poll I've seen. Uh, any, well, any, that, any, any second thoughts about this? Uh, any, any chance? Not maybe? at all. That may be true, but, but you see, uh, it's a very different situation. We have an attorney general here in the state of Connecticut who is being polled on his performance as attorney general uh, without anybody essentially uh, calling him or running against him. And he has refused to take a position on TARP. He's refused to take a position on the stimulus package. He, he refused to take a position on civilian uh, trials for Khalid Sheikh Mohammed in New York City. So as long as he refuses to take a position, uh, he can uh, sustain some of those numbers. But we're calling him on it every day. And, and as soon as he begins taking positions, he's going to come down. Because you see, it's not just Chris Dodd and his personal issues that were a problem. It's the Democrat agenda coming out of Washington, D.C., that has people upset. And that's why we have upsets in New Jersey, upsets in Virginia, and a huge upset in Massachusetts. You got a chance to take back the House. Any thoughts of going back to, to try to run for the House again? You lost one of the closest races in the country in 2006. I, uh, <clears throat> I ran in 2006 serving in the most Democrat district in America held by a Republican. I lost by 83 votes. Since then, I've been the business advocate of the state of Connecticut. And, and by the way, I was uh, Barry Goldwater's chief of staff for four years and worked for John Chafee of Rhode Island. So I think I'm a very competitive candidate for the Senate. Why not run for House again, though? Uh, I think I'm a very competitive candidate for the Senate. Let, let, let me just try one more crack at this. <laughs> Is there any chance, do you completely rule out uh, the possibility of switching and running for the House instead? My, uh, I have spent 100% of my time and energy over the last year raising money and generating endorsements to run for the U.S. Senate. Okay, I think I think we're written where we're going to get with that, uh, <laughs> Congressman. Uh, you've been carrying around a, a tea bag uh, and gotten some national publicity. Do you have it with you, by the way? You... Uh, I have I have my Constitution with me, but I I, I actually used the tea bag this morning. I had a <laughs> cup of tea. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, they could get messy, I guess, if you keep it too long. But I want to ask you what what that means to you. The, the fact that you're carrying it around. You you developed a reputation as something of a moderate in Congress, as you mentioned, representing one of the most Democratic districts. But th this has connotations, to my mind at least, is uh, pretty, pretty strongly conservative. Well, uh, I, have, I have raised my right hand and sworn to uphold the Constitution as a, as a private in the Army, as an officer in the Army, as a CIA officer, as a member of the Senate staff, and the list goes on. And, and I think that a public office is a public trust, and people who swear that oath ought to know that they're swearing to uphold the Constitution. I carry it in my pocket, so I, I have it handy on any question that comes up where I have a question about what I should be doing. What does the tea bag the mean? What does the tea bag mean in addition to that? Well, uh, there's been a lot of talk about the tea parties. You know, the, the acronym TEA stands for taxed enough already. People are taxed enough already. Small business is overtaxed. The business community creating jobs. And the Tea Party movement is a group of citizens who are speaking out against this and, and, and exercising their First Amendment rights to speak, to assemble, uh, and to petition the government against redress of grievances. And I think that's a constitutional right, and I support it. All right, well, let, let's pick up on that tax question. One of the things in the president's budget we see today is letting the, the Bush tax cuts expire on those making over $200,000 a year. Do you have a problem with that, I mean, facing the kind of deficits we're looking at of, of asking those that are make over two hundred thousand dollars a year to give back some of those tax cuts well i i think it depends on who they are a lot of small businessmen and women file under subchapter s and if they're included if they're if their gross income as a businessman is included in the calculation then yes that's terribly unfair and that's happened here in connecticut and that's happened elsewhere where they they package the tax on the rich into a, a tax form that is actually designed for small businessmen and women. So you have to look at the details and see exactly what they're doing. And if you're able to carve them out, you'd be okay with it? Uh, no, I think that, that the Bush tax cuts were very uh, helpful, very useful in, in, in uh, growing us out of a recession and out of the 9-11 uh, disaster, which was an economic problem as well as a uh, national security problem. You know, uh, we need to grow the pie 
not divided into smaller pieces. And you grow right. the pie by getting the tax man off the back of businesses so they uh, can create jobs. All right. Former Congressman Rob Simmons, Republican from Connecticut, running for the Senate up there. Good luck with your campaign. Thanks for being here. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you.